Dear students, today we will discuss very important concept known as World Wide Web. So basically, we have uh, internet, we have network of networks already available. Now the next task is to retrieve data which is available to at any server and service the users. So actually, the idea of web was originated. Uh, by some professors working at CERN. CERN is a research center at Switzerland and there were different people working. Uh, for example, Tim Berners-Lee and then Robert Celelio and then some other people were also working over there who submitted a project proposal that we have the physics documents available at CERN and those documents, relevant documents, should be linked up together. So this was basically the idea. And that idea then uh, transformed into the whole World Wide Web to link all of the documents available in the whole internet. So this was one of the effort. And then at that time, contemporary uh, systems were available. So contemporary mean the systems that were pertaining at that particular time as well. So there were some other proposals as well like there was first Gopher server which was also trying to do what World Wide Web effort at Sun was trying to do. So they have made first server in 1991 by Mark Mikhail. And then there was World Wide Web Server in 1991 by Sun. And there was first Hyper-G Server application in Grass that was built by my PhD supervisor, Professor Dr. Herman Maurer. And all of these efforts basically were uh, competing with each other in terms of applications, functionalities, features, etc. But the breakthrough was given to World Wide Web due to first graphic uh, browser known as Mosaic in 1993. However, uh, before the Mosaic uh, browser in 1993, Goofer was more spread all over the world. So there were 80,000 servers were available at one time in 1993 in the world. And at that time, only less than 10 servers uh, were available for World Wide Web and Hyper-G. But situation started to turn in favor of World Wide Web in the same year. And in the 1994, it got a lot of boom. So there were some important features which were missed out in World Wide Web. But those were the core part of other efforts like Hyper-G. For example, there was automatic version control, which, which is even missing now in World Wide Web, although we are using it since around 20 years. And then transclusion, the concept of transclusions was missing in World Wide Web. This means the version control is very easy to understand that if a document has different versions so all of those versions should be tracked properly and transclusion mean that if there is a document so only that document should be stored at one place it shouldn't be stored at multiple places the same document so to re remove the redundancy then there was access management so which kind of like uh, ip addresses could be accessed by which users and then those access managements were hierarchical as well. And then there were uh, broken links which were avoided. Um, and this uh, feature is not available in World Wide Web. You might have seen that when you access some uh, IP uh, like abc.gov.pk, so you might see that uh, it says that the uh, link is broken. So this basically server doesn't exist. So something like this may happen to you when you try to uh, scroll or subscribe on the internet and try to identify information. 
then the current web is not storing metadata uh, it is not flexibly searchable because there is no metadata available so you cannot search the web uh, flexibly you cannot put certain queries for example if you want to put a query that i want to see uh, i want to compare the weather of lahore with the weather of washington in the last 15 years and tell me the peak point where the difference is the maximum so such a query cannot be answered from the traditional web as all of the data is stored in unstructured way there is no metadata available and um, one of the feature in hyper-g was annotations that you can annotate you can write anything what you want for particular document so for example you are seeing any document you can write down your comment on that document which can be read by others in the form of annotations so then there are two basic terms known as hypertext and hypertext which was basically the term coined by ted nelson in 1965 and these were to link the documents and second term is hyperlinks to link hypertext document so for example i have put here a link so this link is basically pointing to http vu.edu.pk so whenever i click on this content this will bring me to this particular address so this is hyperlink and this will connect to a hypertext document which contains such links so if we summarize today's topic we have learned about world wide web its history and what is the true basically efforts in world wide web so it is not only one as we have mentioned previously that we always give credit to only one person so there were many many different efforts going on in the world and even the sophisticated ones as well available uh, the, the features which are even not available nowadays in the world wide web were available in hyper g or in gopher system 20 years ago and we have discussed uh, hypertext document and hyperlinks as two important terms as well